I promise you guys. So like I said, just to give a wrap up of what I was talking about, most of the uh, local websites like uh, dci.geo.ke, uh, safaricom.co.ke, jumia.co.ke, most of them are still using IPv4 because as a country we have not made the transition. But most of the foreign ones, I'm talking about facebook.com, I'm talking about youtube.com, I'm talking about, uh, let me do the last one, Google. Google.com, check that out. Google also has IPv6, 2A00, column 1450401A, A01, 200P. It goes there before it's 172. 217 170.206. So this is the transition. And that's why for us to be relevant in this particular field. Today, in fact, we needed to have started yesterday. We need to have good understanding of IPv6. You need to know how to handle IPv6 because tomorrow we'll start configuring devices. There, the government is already, I was at the communication authority the other day. They're already beginning the framework for the transition because they will manage that. And so every network person, every IT person, they need to know how to handle IPv6. Because you make a small mistake in IPv6, you can mess up the whole network. It's a very sensitive one. And so to start us up on this chapter on IP version 6, like I said, this is the future uh, of IT, the future of networking. We're going to cover the following. So we'll implement an IPv6 addressing scheme. And the first thing is we'll look at what is wrong with IPv4? That's the first thing, the issues that surround IPv4. We we'll look, how do we represent IPv6? Like we say, IPv4 is 32 bits, isn't it? Yes. Divided into four parts called octets. First octet, second octet, third octet, and fourth octet, isn't it? Each, and IPv4 is always written in decimals, 192 to 160 or something, isn't it? IPv6, you are going to see it's written in hexa, decimals, okay? You see 0 up to 9 and A up to F. Those are the numbers you see in IPv6. Each octet of IPv4 can be written to give us 8 bits, isn't it? We're going to find out that IPv6 does not have octets. They are not even four parts. IPv6 has eight parts. In each part, we had mentioned before, can be called something that is not official, a name called hextet, hextet, where the hex means if you write one part, can give us 16 bits, one part, and there are eight of them. And so eight, I mean, 16 bits in one part, which is called hextet, and there are eight hextets. So 16 times eight is what gives us the 128 bits. So IPv6 is 128 bits. IPv4 is just 32 bits, which means one IP version 4 goes into IPv6 four times. Four times, that's a very long one. IPv4 version 4 are just 4.3 billion. We saw the other day, IPv6, they are over 340 and decillion. Billion is nine zeros, and decillion is 36 zeros. That's that's a, a big a big number. And it's not one one hex, one and decillion. It is 340 and decillions with other you know uh, octillion. So let's let's see. So apart from that. We look at the types of IPv6 and we compare it with IPv4 as well. Then we narrow down to two types of IPv6. The first one is called the GUA. GUA is a short form for global unicast routing. Okay, global, no, global unicast address, GUA, global unicast address. Last week we talked about public and private, yes. and we're able to see the private addresses. If you see an address of 172.16, 0, 0, all the way to 172.31.255.255. The second one was 10.0.0, all the way to 10.255.255.255. That is the second category of private addresses. Then the last category was 192.168.0.0, all the way to 192.168.255.255. If you ever see those three groups, those are private addresses. Anything that is out of that group are the public. IPs, all right? Yes. So we look at two specific types, global unicast address. We have, there's a time we configured some IPv6 addresses, isn't it? Yes. 
So the global unit service is equivalent to public IT before address. In fact, that's a question that will come to the exam. How do we refer? Or they'll ask you the which is the equivalent of the public IT before addresses in IPv6? It is the global unit address, or call it the board. The other one we learn about is the LLA, which is we configured last week. Do you remember that IPv6 address that begins with FE80? Double column something. Isn't it? Yes. We did configure them here. So it's called the linked local address, LLA, linked local address. This are very, very important IPv6 addresses. And then we look the last thing, dynamic addressing, not even the last, dynamic addressing for IPv6. Like how does IPv6 devices acquire IPv6 address automatically if you don't configure it manually, okay? The last thing that we'll be talking about, of course, is dynamic addressing for IPv6 using the LLS, link local. We look at the IPv6 multicast addresses, and finally, we are going to subnet an IPv6 network. We are going to subnet, and we'll take an activity, we'll work on, and then I'll give you your activity to also do as, as, as your homework. So we'll take one topology, which has both IP version 4 and IPv6. We'll subnet IPv4, then we submit IPv6, and we configure them together. Very interesting. And then I'll also give you one to go and work on uh, at home. Let's get started first. Let's get started. I don't know that my speed is clear uh, now. Okay, that should be okay. So what are some of the issues that we do have with IP version 6? So the first thing we need to note is that the world is running out of IPv4 addresses. We have already run out of them. And that's why IPv6 is the successor of IP version 4. And um, this is because IP version 6 has a large, a larger address space of 128 bits. IP version 4 is just 32 bits, okay? And the, the reason why we have IP6 is because IP6 is going to fix some problems that we have been having with IP version 4. And what are some of the problems? Number one, the internet population has increased. Okay? We have 8 billion. The version 4 are 4 point something billion. You see, we are almost double the number of IP before, isn't it? And yet some people use more than one, more than two devices. Some people have two phones, some people have a tablet, a laptop. They come here, we still give them a desktop computer. All those four devices need an IP address. So the internet population is increasing. There is the limited space for IPv4. There are just 1.3 billion. Network address translation has its own issues. The fact that it translates public to private, private to public, it has made it very hard to work with some applications like VPNs. They have a lot of challenges for them. Oh, we have IoT. The Internet of Things, where we are making the unconnected to be connected. We are making all these fluorescent tubings to be connected to the internet. We are making smart ceilings, smart windows and window panes, smart um, curtains. You can just log into your phone and you can lock your curtain or close your windows. That is that is part of the IoT. That's why it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to move to IP version six. To move to IP version six. There's something that I want you guys to see a bit clearly, and that's why I keep on going back uh, and forth of this chapter. So let me let me just show you. Yeah, I needed you to see this one. I needed you people to see here. This is the diagram that shows how we all the five regions have run on top of IP6. So first and foremost, if you look at the North America, their regional internet registry is called ERIN, and that is uh, American Registry for Internet Numbers. They exhausted their IPv4 addresses in July 2015. July 2015. We go to South America. South America. They exhausted their IPv4 address in April 2011. April 2011. Europe. Europe. Um, Germany. Germany. Turkey. All those parts, the United Kingdom, they exhausted theirs in September 2012. They exhausted the IP version 4 addresses. We come to Asia, Asia countries, uh, Australia down there, they exhausted the IP4 in June 2014. June 2014. And then Africa, we did our exhaustion was in 2020. And now we are in 20, 
2024, isn't it? So you can see the whole world. These are the regional internet registries that provide uh, addresses to the ISPs, which are in each and every continent. So you see where we are now. That's why this transition is imminent. We cannot run away from it. And that's why we must have the right skills for handling IPv6. We are ready, we have already used IPv6 and, 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 and we have to move. We cannot, no, we can no longer resist this transition. Affinity 2020, that was our, our presupposed date for doing that. And that's why it's no longer possible to stop talking about IPv6. It's here with us. We can't run away from it because it is already here. So the question is, how do you move? What are some of the strategies that we put forward or the world has put forward through the IETF to make the transition? And this will come to your exam. How are we going to be moving? So there are three transitional strategies. We cannot just wake up today and tomorrow. We are no longer using education for that is wrong. That will never happen. And so the transition happens like a DJ wants to slide one music. So he fades the other music and increases the volume for the other music, isn't it? How few people have never heard from DJs? I mean, <laughs> you see the way they fade one music and they increase the volume of another one, isn't it? Yes. yes. At some point, both music you can hear them playing both of them in the background, isn't it? Am I? It's only me who listen to music. <laughs> Is it true? Yeah, it's true. The DJ, when the DJ wants to fade one and in, and bring in a new one, eh? at some point, at certain point, you hear both music are in the background, and then you hear the other one fading. And he brings the other one. And then people are now dancing or listening to the other one. So right now, both IP version 4 and 6 are coexisting. And that's why, as I did the name system lookup on my CMD, you're able to realize that those international companies, they're having both IP version 4 and 6 together, isn't it? Yes, they have, they're using both of them. And that is a transitional strategy. Two, uh, and that's what we call what? We call it dual stock. Dual stock. Is when a device has the ability to run both IP version 4 and IP version 6 at the same time. That is called dual stop. All right. Then we have another one called tunneling, and they will ask me in the exam three ways, three transitional strategies of transition from IP version 4 to 6. So the first one is called dual stop, where both of them are, are being used simultaneously. The second one is called tunneling. In tunneling, we talked about some packets, isn't it? The PDU at layer 3 of the OSI. And we talk about the packets. And so we do have both IP version 6 and IP version 4 packets. And you saw the packets, isn't it? For IP version 4 and IP version 6. The one for IP version 6 was having very few fields. The one for, in fact, they had removed more of the fields from IP version 4. So tunneling is where you transport IP6 packets inside IP4 packets. The network is popularly known for IP version 4. Okay? But you need to transport transport some IPv6 packets. So you actually transport the IPv6 packets over an IP version on it or inside IP version 6 packets. And you can see the word is encapsulation. We encapsulate IPv6 packets inside IP version 4. Because they you know it's like when you want to go to Uganda and you don't want to follow the border. Okay. They are people who are Ugandans, who can be able to help you cross the border. So they, then they are citizens of Uganda. So you go there and you want to carry something across the border, they are the ones who will carry it for you. And when they carry it, when the police at the border see them, ah, they see them as normal citizens of Uganda, and they can cross. You, you can come carrying nothing. And I mean, they will not ask you because you're not carrying anything. So once they have encapsulated your boot and they cross to the other side of the border, now you can cross and you can pick your good and you continue going wherever you need to go to. So that is encapsulation, you turn it. You carry the version six packets inside those of IP version four. The last strategy is called translation. This translation works like NAT, network address translation, but it's a bit different. You know the way NAT works? In our border router or edge router, where packets move from our computers, when they reach the border router, the border router translate IPv4 private into public, into public. 
Now here, the I give you four packets are translated into IPv6, V6, and traffic will be coming back again on those packets. They translate the version six to back to version four. So that's something called NAT64. NAT64, and you'll still you know, be able to talk about it at some point. So this is similar to NAT for IPv4, but it's, it's not NAT because NAT is used very differently from the way uh, we use NAT64. NAT64 is for transition for IPv4, for IPv6. But the normal NAT is for translating pub private addresses to public addresses or public back to crap to private. So these Hello, three strategies Alan. are being used for the transition Alan. for the transition from IPv4 to IP version six. Okay. Hello, Alan. Yes. I want to ask you before we move on regarding tunneling, is there a slight latency problem? So since uh, you're, you're carrying the IPv6 address in an IPv4 packet, is there a slight can latency you, yes. problem? Yes, can you ask again? Yes, start again. So with tunneling, okay. when you're tunneling an IPv6 address inside an IPv4 packet, is there a latency issue? Does it cause the other ping to go high because of the translation? Or is... Yes, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Uh, and that is the reason why we are moving away from that. The IPv6 networking, we will never need NAT. We will never need NAT for IPv6 because NAT causes those uh, latency issues, which makes IPv6 to be slower. And so the current NAT we are having, it's just for the transition period. Once we have fully transited to IP version 6, we will no longer need that. But you are right, it causes latency issues. All right, that's clear. Let's let's move on, guys. Let's look at how do you represent IP version six. Uh, so like I mentioned already, IPv6 is made of a total of 128 bits, isn't it? Did I say that? Yes, but IPv6 uses hexadecimal numbers from 0 to 9 and A to F, isn't it? Yes, those letters, the five the five letters from A, B, C, D, E, F, they are actually six letters. They are not case sensitive. You can either use small or capital, or you can even mix them. It doesn't matter. Uh, yes, they are case insensitive. Uh, IPv4, the three octets are separated with decimal points, isn't it? IPv6, they are separated with a colon, a full colon, not semicolon, a full colon, okay? IPv6 are always in eight parts. Let me look for... Uh, look for a more clearer, something that we can all see on the IPv6 representation. But yeah, it is. So looking at this diagram here, we can clearly see that uh, that uh, I want to do this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is clearer now. So we can see that IPv6 is always separated using a column. And that is important to know. And you can see all the way. And how many parts are there? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight parts, okay? And all the parts, I'm gonna show you, they are not called octets. They are called hextet. And there's a reason why I'm gonna show you. And if you look at here, the IPv6, each, each part can range from, by the way, each part is always made of four hexadecimal numbers. So each part is made of how many hexadecimal numbers? Four. It can start from 0000, zero, zero, zero or 0111 one, 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 or 111 one, 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 or AAAA or BBBB or ACBD or EFG, EF, no, EF, there's no G, EF12 or FFFF, or CCCC, or so long as there are four, 
Okay? Yes. And so we are giving an uh, I mean uh, uh, extreme range here yeah? from zero all the zero 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 all the way to F F F A, isn't it? I did tell you guys that IPv6 does not use 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. No, it only uses the first four. And the first four is 8, 4, okay, 2 and 4 and 1. Those are the only ones it uses. For example, a question for you. If you have number 7, what will it be? Which numbers, if you add there, you get seven? Eight and uh, four and two, but and one. Yeah. So we'll, if you add four plus two plus one, isn't that seven? It is. Isn't it? So you'll put a one here, put a one here, and put a one here, and you put a zero here, isn't it? And that is how we write seven in in binary. Hexadecimal seven into bar binary. We'll have zero, one, one, one. Okay. We'll have zero, one, one, one. Are, are you understanding what I'm doing? Because we did, did we did do it sometime back, isn't it? Give me, if I have uh, 11, 11 will be? Put one, it will be what plus what plus what? Eight plus, plus two plus one. And then you put a zero here, isn't it? So eight plus two is 10 plus one is 11, isn't it? So 11 will be one, zero, one, one, okay? 10, 10, eight plus two, isn't it? Is 10 a hexadecimal number? No. Is 10 a hexadecimal number? So, so, so which one is the hexadecimal number in place of 10? A. It should be A, isn't it? Very good. So A, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then you start A, B, C, D, E, F. Those are the hexadecimal numbers, isn't it? Yes, even 11 is not an hexadecimal number. Because 11 would be what? Would be B, isn't it? Uh, C will be 12. Uh, 13 will be D, isn't it? 14? E and F will be F in, in will be 15, isn't it? 15 will be what here? Yeah? 15 will be 1, 1, 1, all of them, isn't it? Because if you add 8 plus 4, it's 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So when you see F, you should imagine of 15, and that is all the four ones 1, 1, 1, 1. If you people did my assignment, you should be knowing that by now. So let me show you something. How do we get, we have said these parts are eight of them, but each and every part normally has four hexadecimal numbers. And we have just seen right now, if you're given any hexadecimal number, any of them, whether it's a zero, whether it's one or two or three or A or B or F, all hexadecimal, each and every hexadecimal number gives us how many bits? How many bits can you see here? Four. All of them will give us four, 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 four bits. Is that true? Hey, guys, I want us to, I want us to be in the same page. Is it true that every hexadecimal number can be written to give us four bits? Yeah, yeah. Even if you have zero, zero will give us four zero, isn't it? One will give us, what? Zero, 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 0001, isn't it? So we have to agree all hexadecimal numbers can be written to give us four bits. Whether it's a zero, whether it's a one, whether it's a two, three, four, all the way to nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. All of them will give us four hexadecimal numbers, isn't it? Very good. So if each part here should have four hexadecimal numbers, either all, all zeros or four Fs like this one here, we can now write each and every of those four hexadecimal numbers to give us the four bits. So let's start with zero. We have just seen that zero will give us four zeros. Let me remove all this other writing here. Okay. So we have seen if we have four zeros, the first zero will give us how many zeros? Four zeros, isn't it? The second zero will give us how many zeros? 
four zeros. The third one here will also give us four zeros. And the fourth one will also give us four, four zeros. How many zeros are those in total? 16 zeros, which means in one hextet or one part, we can get a total of 16. Let's do with F. F has four ones, isn't it? So the first F here will give us four ones. The second F will also give us four, four ones. The third F will give us the four ones here that we have here. And the last F, the fourth F, will also give us four ones. How many ones are those in total? 16. So each part gives us 16 bits. And that's why we call it hextet. That's why we call it a hextet. Hextet is uh, that bit that will give us a total of 16 binary bits. 16 binary bits for all of them even the ones the ipv6 addresses you saw here the ones that we are getting from youtube from facebook from google even those if written they will give us four bits but check this out i want you to check something out here this one this is an example <laughs> i don't know why it's not working Maybe you can see this. So, uh, IP version 6 has a subject mask? Yes, and you'll see it. Most of the time we use slash 64. That is the common subject mask being used. Okay? Yeah. Now, if you can be able to see what is actually here, let me zoom for you guys here. These are examples of IP6 addresses. You can see the eight parts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, isn't it? With the columns in between, isn't it? Yes. So these are IP6 addresses. It's they're long, isn't it? Eh? And when things are long like this, people get tired. You know, people get, you know, people feel tired or people just feel that they are hard, and yet it is not hard. This is what is called the new normal. And I'm gonna need us a time will come when you'll be asked, what is the IP6 address of your PC? And you like. The IP6 address, the IP address of my PC is 2001 colon 0 db8 colon 000 colon 111 colon 000 colon 000 colon 000 colon 0200. And they want you to give us the IP6 address, give us the default, the default gateway, give us the DNS. DNS is always two of them, okay? And by the time you say just for one PC, you are tired already. <laughs> and yet, research has always been done and it's still being done up to now. I'm going to take you through two ways of shortening this IP to make it a bit shorter, okay? So we need to see two strategies. How can I make it a bit shorter? You saw the ones that we were given here, they were not this long, isn't it? The ones that we saw on the CMD, were they this long? They were not even having eight parts in the first place. So I want to show you, how can we make it shorter by playing around with some zeros or something like that? So that's what I want us to do. So the first rule for shortening IP6 addresses is omit the leading zeros. And yet the question is, how do we refer to zero as an omitting, as an, a leading zero? Let me show you. So how do you know a zero is an, a, a leading zero? A leading zero is a zero that comes at the beginning of every hex set, every part, all right? So look at this part here. Here's my, yeah. This part here is 0, 1, A, B, OK? Can you see that? A leading 0 is a 0 that comes at the beginning. So if a 0 comes at the beginning, omit it. So 0, 1, A, B will become 1, A, B, all right? If you have 0, 9, F, 0, the 0 at the end is not a leading 0. That one is called a trailing 0, OK? Don't touch the trailing zeros. Only the zeros that come at the beginning. If there is more than one that come at the beginning, omit all of them. What if there are four? If there are four, we are going to see, okay? In a few. So this is zero A zero zero. We, so this one will become A zero zero. Don't touch any zero that come at the end. So long as there's a digit in the middle, okay? A digit can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, all right? Look at this one, zero, zero, A, B. That will become what? A, B. 
it the zeros have to come at the beginning. OK. Let me let me. Let us look at this. This should, should paint some picture. For us. Ah, check this out, guys. Can you see this one here? We have a uh, two zero zero one and don't touch any zero that is in the middle of two numbers. OK, the zeros have to be lead, leading and should not be trailing. So two zero zero one will remain two zero zero one, isn't it? Zero DB eight. DB eight. Uh, our question is here. When there are four zeros, zero, 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 zero. Omit the first three, leave only the last one. So remove all these first three here, leave the last one here. And that's why we only have one Z, one zero, OK? When all of them are one, 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 they remain. Zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 zero. Zero, two, zero, zero. Zero, zero. So that is the first rule. Omit the leading Z, zeros. We have made it a bit shorter, but not where I want it to be. We are going to look at a second, the second and the last way of making it much shorter. All right. And by the way, let me just tell you, you see the second one we have gotten here, this answer here. OK, it's a bit shorter now, isn't it? Every time you assign that the way it is in the second line, we assign it to the PC or the router. The router knows that when it is given one zero or it's given one digit on our extent, it's going to fill the remaining three parts with zeros. The machines are aware. OK, for example, you give it two zero zero one DB8. It will add a zero at the beginning to make it zero DB8. OK, if you give the machine zero, it knows it needs to add three more zeros at the beginning, not at the end, at the beginning. So the machine will fill it so that there are four because each hex state must have four, four, four hexadecimal numbers. OK, yes. So here it will add three more zeros here. The machine will. Machine will and 200, the machine will add a zero here. So that is how the machines have been programmed. OK, check this out. Check this one here. Let me see. Yeah, I want you to check the I think the last three here. Check this one. FE8 0000 0000 000 000 like that, like that like that and 0001. You see that? This will be FE8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And this one, they'll remove the three zeros and remain with what? With one, OK? Are you seeing that? Yes. What if all of them were just zeros? Check this out. Everything was here. Four zeros will be one zero. The same to here, here, here. Here, 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 and here. So you mean I'd be, I'd be, I'd be if it's, it's, it can be all zeros. It can be all zeros. And the standard base we'll be using. When you get to CCNA 2 and 3, you'll have an address that is all zeros. All the 128, all, I mean, all the, all the eight parts. By the way, let me ask you guys, eh? if one hexet has four hexadecimal numbers, what is the total number of hexadecimal numbers in all the eight hexes? Four times eight, which is? Yes, four times four times the eight parts, 32. So each an IV6 is supposed to have 32 hexadecimal numbers, OK? So you can see that the last part, we have omitted the leading zeros, and you have zero, column zero, column zero. So we, yes, we will have an address that has all zeros, but that time will come, OK? Yes, just stay put this more to come. Now, let's look at the second strategy for making this even shorter. So to make this even shorter, we go for the second rule, which says, for any zeros that follow each other, we call them contiguous zeros. Replace them using a double column. Replace them using a double column. And that's what I want to show you guys here now. OK, so let's see here. Now look at this one. We are having 2001, 0 db8, 0 0 0 0, 1 1 1 1, 0 0 0, 0 0 0, 0 0 0 0, 0 0 0 0. We have this example 
has skipped the second, the first option. Remember the first strategy was to omit the leading zeros, isn't it? And so here we will have two zero zero one. This was going to be DB8. This was going to be zero. This was going to be one, one, one. What was going to be here? Zero, uh -huh. zero here, zero here, zero and here. Two zero zero two hundred, isn't it? So to use the second strategy, because we are going to have three zeros here in the using the first first uh, option, isn't it? Now using the second, because three zeros are going to follow each other here. We just replace that space of the three zeros using a double column, and that's what you see here. That's what you see right here. You see the double column here? Can you see this double column? Yes. So that it's going to be shorter. It will now be 2001, colon DB8, colon 0, colon 1111, double column 200. There are a few disclaimers here. Disclaimer number one, you can never use two double columns on the same IPv6 address. Okay? Are you together? Okay. On the same address, you cannot use two double columns. You only put the double column in one place on the IPv6 address. Okay? Are we together? What I'm saying is this. I'm going to use the second example to do that. Check this out. 2001, 0DB8, 0000, 0000, AB00, 0000, 0000, and 0000. Isn't it? So this one will be use the first option, the first uh, strategy. Two zero zero one. Let's go. Then the next one. DB eight. Let's able to say. Let's yeah. let's say as we do. Eh? Zero. Zero. Uh -huh. Zero. Zero. Uh -huh. A B. A B zero zero. Are you seeing this one? Yes. Don't touch the zeros at the end. We say the zeros you touch at the beginning zeros. Okay. This is going to be AB00. What could have been here? Zero. Zero. zero, zero. What could have been here? Zero, zero. and then zero. Isn't it? Zero. Now check this out. Here we have two zeros following each other. But here we have how many zeros? Three. Three. When you're putting a double column, you cannot put a double column where there are two zeros and put a double column where there are three zeros. Our objective is to make the address shorter, isn't it? So you put it where there are more zeros. Between two zeros and three zeros. Where are there are more zeros? Three where zeros. there are three zeros, isn't it? Yes. But that does not mean when you put the double column where there are two zeros, it is wrong. But it will make the address still longer. Okay? Our objective is to make the address shorter. So locate where there are more zeros. That's why you put your double column. And that's why we have to retain these two zeros by saying 2001 colon DB8. Column zero, column zero, column A, B, zero, zero. Then you put a double column there. It represent all the three zeros there. Oh. Equal, choose one, whatever you choose. Choose any. Yes, choose which part you want to put it, okay? Now, do you know what machine does when it sees the double column? The machine, one, the machine knows that there's supposed to be eight parts, isn't it? So the machine sees here and sees how many parts are here? Let's, let's, let, let me just locate my. Yes, the machine sees here and says these are one, two, three, four, five. The machine can only see five parts, isn't it? And there's a double column at the end there. If you can see five parts, how many parts are remaining for it to be eight? Three parts. The machine knows it's going to fill three more parts with zeros, and that's why it's able to regain. That's why if you put a double column where there are two zeros and where there are three zeros, the machine will not be knowing where do I put two X steps and where do I put three X steps because you're confusing the machine. The machine might just put three zeros here and, not, and put two there, and yet that is not how it's supposed to be. So you only use one double colon in one IP6 address. Is that is that okay? 
that is very, very important for you uh, to know. And there's more examples here. Uh, this one is a bit easier. Like if you look at the, the last one here, uh, these last ones here. Yeah, this one here. We have the FE8. Here we are supposed to have one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, and there's a one here, isn't it? We represent all this using a double colon, double colon. So the double colon is here, and we end up with FE8 double colon one. And this is the short form of the IPv6 address. Check this out. If everything is all zeros here, everything is zeros. We omit the leading zero to each part. We leave one zero here. One, one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero. At the end of it all, since all of them are zeros, we replace it using our double column. And that is the short form for IPv6. So when you see a double column, just know it is representing zeros. But like this, we assign to a computer. Yes, but it has a special use. This one is what is called the, it's, it's a, it's a link to a column. IP6 address. We will use it at some point. We will configure it when we will be but doing our thing. Local is like, like the default thing. Yes. In IP6, IP6 loves to use a link local address. And you will see this one so many times. FE8 double colon one acting as an IP6 address. It is this. Hello. Yes. Yes, I'm in class. Can I can I talk to you after my class? So we'll come to see, and I will remind you, I will be drawing you back to this day. Did you ever see an address that is double colon? In fact, it will be double colon slash zero. Remember me that day, what I said here. So, yes. So this is this is IP6. You can look at, if you see IP6, it's not as straightforward as IPv4, isn't it? Yes, IPv6, you need to know some details because it's a very delicate one. You need to know how to handle it because one mistake, you're out, and you'll see, especially when we'll be subnetting IPv6. All right, yeah. So that is. These are a few things you know that we have with IP version six, and there's an activity here that I need you to work on, guys. This is one of those activities that you can be able to work on by yourself. This activity is activity number twelve to four. Twelve to four is your first assignment for today. You are given an IPv6 here. You're supposed to use the Two steps, omit leading zeros, and then compress format. What do you have there, class? Very fast. Let's do that one. Zero. zero. Next. Zero. Next. Zero. Uh -huh. zero. 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 Uh, one. 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 Isn't it? What is that going to be? Double colon. Double one. colon. Uh, one. Good. One. And when you say check, and it's correct, it's actually, you know, correct for us. So that is. Uh, very important. Let me get a uh, uh, next one. That is a bit easier. Uh, let's go this one. Omit leading zeros. Oh. The FE80. FE80 next. Zero. 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 Uh -huh. uh -huh. Next. Nine one zero one. Nine, Nine one zero one. Zero. zero. That is for AB. AB. Okay. The shortest one. F E eighty. Uh -huh. Double column. Double column. Six. Sixty six seventy eight. Column. Zero. Column. Thirty four. AB. That's it. Yeah. And I can say check. And, and that's good. So play around with this just to practice, to give you a clear view of what it is, okay? Sometimes when we are doing it together, it can be very easy until you do it alone. So assignment 12 to 4 is the first one today. You're going to work on that, okay? Yes. I want you guys to get familiar. By the time you get done at Kenyatta University, someone talks to you about IPv6 or someone gives you an IPv6 address. I mean, it's normal to you because you have done it several times, all right? Yes. I want you guys to be... Not just students. I want you to be better students. 
in say in Swahili we say uh monofunzi bora bora monofunzi just a mere student or you know the real student so that's what i want you to do anyway let's uh now change gears here and uh, having we have done the three of them let's look at types of ipv6 addresses the types and in ipv6 we also have unicast which means one to one to one isn't it multicast one to many isn't it ipv6 there's no broadcast in place of broadcast we have what is called anycast all right yes we have what is called anycast we have what is called anycast so and that's the other question that will come to your exam which one of the following is the types of ipv6 addresses you will look at unicast multicast and broadcast you will forget that there's no broadcast in ipv6 we have anycast okay where anycast is one to one multicast is one to many or one to a group isn't it any cast works like this. I'd already explained it to you guys. You have five friends. You go to Safaricom, tell them we need five SIM cards for our phones, but we have the SIM cards to have the same number. So that whenever someone sends a text message to one of us, all of us will receive it. So in, unica in any cast, you assign the same IP to different devices, to multiple devices. All right? Anyway, you'll meet that in the exam. IP version 4, we say subnet mask. 255 to 255 to 255 that's something, isn't it? In IPv6, we call it a prefix length. Okay? Yes. In fact, in IPv6, you see, like last week I showed you slash. We had we saw slash 24, slash 25, slash 26, slash 30, slash 27. You saw those, isn't it? Which is called the slash notation. In IPv6, they use the slash notation. And the most common slash that is used. It's only slash 64. Slash 64. Okay. Yeah. And that is the recommended IP6 pref length for our lungs. Now, did, do you remember we talked about two portions of IPv4? Host portion and network portion, isn't it? Now you'll be learning today. IPv6 now has three portions, not two portions like we saw. We still have the network, the host portion and the network portion, but they have different names. But we have introduced a third portion, which we shall see. All right. So, yes. In fact, the network portion here in IPv6, we call it the, the prefix. But I'll change that name a bit. But the host portion is called the network ID, the interface ID, the interface ID. I don't always like this slide because it gives us half information. We'll come to the right slide. But let me introduce you guys to these unique addresses. The GUA. Yes. Yes. Because IPv6 does not do any broadcasting. We do broadcasting. We left it for IP version 4. It was designed. It was by design not to have not to broadcast because broadcasting IPv4 has a weakness. It makes the devices insecure because something sent as a broadcast, it goes to all devices. And among all devices can also be a hacker's laptop or a hacker's machine. And the hacker machine lays his hands on the broadcast. Sometimes the broadcast is carrying very useful information. The hacker can take it, manipulate it, and use it to uh, commit criminal activities. And that's why you'll, one of the features you'll be learning about IPv6, it's more secure than IPv4. Okay? And security comes because of some of these things. It doesn't broadcast. It doesn't broadcast. Anyway, global unicus address. I call it GUA. GUA is more applicable to me than GUA. 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 GUA looks like an African language. Say GUA. So the global unicast address, it is similar to the public IPv4. Okay? Public IPv4. And they are the ones that are globally unique. They can be used over the internet and they are internet routable addresses. They are routable to the internet. In fact, this is the address, the only address that is routable to the internet. It's similar. 
to the public IPv4 addresses. Now, every time you configure VUA, you always configure an LLA, the link local address. And the link local address is always required for every IPv6 enabled device and is always used to communicate with the devices on the same local link, same network, same link. GUA is used to communicate between different links, different networks, okay? Link local is used to communicate on the same local link, but they are not routable and they're only configured to a single link. They're not routable is a very important word. They cannot be used to route to the internet. Okay. So far, the only address that is the only type that is routable is the GUA global unicast address. It is the only one that is routable to the internet. Just like the public IPv4 addresses, they are routable to the internet. We have other types, which we will be talking about them one by one. The third type is called the EULA. EULA is the unique local address. Unique local address. It is the one that is equivalent to the private IPv4 address. Okay? Yes. And those questions will come. Which of the following addresses, the IPv6 address, is equivalent to IPv6 private addresses? It's the unique local uh, address. Unique local address. How do you identify a unique local address, by the way? I didn't talk about how do you identify uh, GUA. If you want to identify GUA, if you ever see any address that begins with two or three, that is a global unicast address. Are we together? Any address that begins with two or three is a global unicast address. That is GUA. That is how you identify it in a group of addresses. Link local, to identify link local, is any address that begins with FEAT. FEAT is a link local address. How do you identify a unique local address? Any address that begins with FC or FD. If you see any IPv6 address that begins with FC or FD, you know that is a unique local address. FEAT, link local. Two or three. Global Unicast address. Very, very important. So they are equivalent to the private IP version 4 address. Let me just take my point here. So the equivalent of private IP4 addresses, but there are some significant differences. One, these unique local addresses are used for local addressing within a site or between a limited number of sites. A site is just a network. Within a network or between a few uh, sites or a few networks. They can use for devices that will never need to access the internet or another network. Then they are not globally routable or translated to global IV6 addresses. You know, private addresses using NAT can be translated to public, isn't it? But these ones cannot be translated. So those are just some few differences that these EULAs, EULA, unique local addresses, have differences with the global. So FC or FD, that is your EULA. Let's go down to the GUA. Let's talk to GUA because GUA is important. And the first thing I want you to note, they are globally routable and unique addresses to the internet. And they start with either two or three. And out of the 340 and decillion addresses, currently, the few continents that already started to use IPv6, right now we are just using an eighth of the total, an eighth. An eighth of 300 over 340 and decillion. We're just using an eighth. That's a very small number because not all the continents are using uh, it. I want you to check here something. Zero, zero, 001. Write it in full. If you have zero, zero, 001, if you write it in full, the full hex text, it will be in full hex text. You know, I told you how to shorten IPv6. Now I want, I'm telling you now, can you lengthen this one to be a full hex text? It will have how many zeros? Hey, I expect us how many hexadecimal numbers? One hex text has how many hexadecimal numbers? Four hexadecimal numbers. It can be zero, 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 or F, 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 isn't it? Every hexadecimal has four hexadecimal numbers. And you said each hexadecimal number can be written to give us four binaries. 
isn't it? Yes. So if you see zero zero one here, we need to add one more zero so that they are four, so that it becomes zero 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 one, isn't it? Yeah. So which means, uh, like I said, it can begin with it should begin with either a two or a, a what a three. That is that. Look at the three parts here. The three parts of a, of a global unit address. The first part is called the global routing prefix. Global routing prefix. That is the network portion. Interface ID is the host portion. And then we have a third portion here. We call it the subnet ID. And we are going to talk about it. OK? Yes, three portions. Global routing prefix, subnet ID, and the interface ID. And we shall talk about it in a few. Now. These are the three parts, of course. The global routing prefix, it is similar to the network portion of IPv4. All right? The global routing prefix is similar to the network port portion. By the way, this is the part that is given to you by the ISP. The ISP will give you the global routing prefix. This is what the provider will provide to the, to the clients. The interface ID, before I talk about the submit ID, the interface ID is equivalent to which portion of the IPv4? Host portion, okay? It's equivalent to the host portion. In most cases, it's given as slash 64. And then the subnet ID is the new introduced portion. This is where we do subnetting for IPv6, and we are going to see how that is actually done. I don't want to feed you so much. I want to take it one day at a time for this case. So the link local IPv6 LLA, which is the link local address, it is always configured on per, per interface, per interface basis. How do you identify it? FE? FE what? FE8. FE8. Yes, it's configured per interface. Most of these other things, I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, we had already talked about them. About them. This lab we did here, where you configured both the link local and the IPv6 global Unicast address. And that's what I want to show you. If you want to configure a global Unicast address, it's very simple. I want to show you this more clearly. Let me see how to do the configurations. Yeah. So to configure the global Unicast address, let's say we have uh, a router like this with three interfaces. We have uh, this is G000, G0 slash 0 slash 1 or here. And then this third interface is S010. How do you configure them? This is what you do. Very simple. We are just doing the global interface address first. So first thing, go to the interface. Say interface, gigabit Ethernet of G0 slash 0 slash 0. Then you say IPv6 address. Then put 2001, colon DB8, colon a card, colon 1, double colon, 1 slash 64. You see the slash 64 is put together with the address in IPv6. OK. And then I need to show you something here, very important, before you ask me, or you will ask me in future. How do you differentiate an IPv6 address from a network address for IPv6? The two of them are different. So listen very carefully. If you have to know whether this is an IPv6 address, which is like a usable address. Remember we talked about in subnetting IPv4, we talk about network address and the first usable, second usable, last usable addresses, isn't it? Now, if you ever see any number after the double column, between the double column and slash 64, if you see a number here, like right now we're having a one here, this one here, this is how you know it is a usable IPv6 address. But if you see a double column, you say 2001 DB8, colon a card, colon one, double column, then slash 64. That one is a network address. So you differentiate it. If there's a number between double column and slash 64, that is an IPv6 address. If there's no number, it is just double column and slash 64. Now, that one is a network address for IPv6. Please do remember that. For some of you will start configuring network addresses as IPv6 addresses. That is wrong. I, are we together up to them? You have to know how to differentiate the two of them. Just the same way here. If there was no, if this one was not here, it is just double colon slash 64. That is an address that is can be assigned. It's a usable address. But if the one is not there, it is a network address. 
Anyway, configure the IP6 address, put that one there, slash 64. Activate the interface using no shutdown. Go to another interface, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1. Say IP6 address, put your IP6 address there. Then say no shutdown to activate the interface. Go to the third interface, interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. Say IP6 address, give you the IP6 address there. Then activate the interface. Sorry, it was okay. Yes. Now this that will follow the what if they are in the middle just somewhere, not the last. Mm -hmm. Now you are in this one is this one address or this one in the middle of it. If it's no, you'll rarely find one that is the last there. You must have a number there. You see that one that is there? Is it this this can follow me? If it is where it is in the middle here. Like oh in the in the middle here. Yes, where well, is DP8. You will not see that soon. It will come in the next 18 billion years to come. Uh, Alan. So, yes, I get just a minute. Are you getting what I'm saying? You'll rarely see that. Because, why? Because currently we are only using an eighth, one over eight of the total number of addresses. Okay. One of the eight means, and you are going to use slash 64, which means the remaining 64 bits will always be zeros for the remaining time. The remaining towards the end will always be zeros. Okay. Now that one there means it's the first usable. If you see two there, second usable. Three, third usable. If you see A is the tenth usable. If you see F is the fifteenth usable. Okay. What if the address don't have say this one double column? If, if the address doesn't have a double column, yes. you will just see a one at the end there, and that will tell you this. Yes. Sure. Sure. Yes. Please bring up your question, sir. So I was asking, so to identify the network portion of an address, you look for the first usable address. Am I correct? Or that ka one at the end? Yeah, if the one, if there's no number at the end after the double colon and it's just slash 64, that is a network address, ah, not network so, portion. So I know you, a usable address does not, should not be designated to identify a network address. So you should just see the, the two dash dash, which is empty field and then slash 64, which tells it's a network address. Yeah, it is a network address. Okay, thank you. Yeah, oh, welcome. Yeah, there's a lot of dynamics in IPv6, and I will need you guys. And as we do the configurations, because we're going to submit it, you will you will see one. You will see a few things that are very interesting today, and that's because as you go outside there, I want you to go and make disciples of all nations and go and teach people IPv6. People don't know about IPv6. People did CCNA. When it was still version five, there was no IP6. It was there, but very little. You people that are studying networking now, very soon the government of Kenya will send people to go and start learning IP6. You are very lucky that you are here. You are here when I'm doing this. You won't have to go to any IP6 class. You will never. In fact, you can even create your own online class and teach people and they pay you about IP6. Because we'll have a massive. And as Kenyatta University is one of those centers that have been identified where people will be coming to learn about IP6. And we'll teach them. We'll teach them the same things that we are having here. We'll teach them the structure, the types, how to subnet it, and how to configure it on the devices, on the PC. Especially subnetting is where it will get interesting. And no, if we did if we did learn IP6, IPv4 subnetting, IPv6 subnetting, which is the easiest, could have been very challenging for us. But anyway. Let's move on. Of course, you need to know how to configure it on the on your PC. We did we did do it, isn't it? You remember we did configure IP6 on the PCs, isn't it? Yeah, we did. So the thing is, you the same place where you always go to. I don't know whether I want to demonstrate that now. Of course, let's put it from there. Otherwise, this thing will go off now. It just give us a second, guys. We're just putting this on power. All right. So let me just plug in uh, this laptop on power so that we do not experience any problems. All right. That's good. So let me just demonstrate for the last time today. So the first thing on the bottom right corner, on the bottom right corner, 
of your screen. I'm trying to make this as practical as possible. Right here, this is where you come and you right click. All right, so if I right click now and I zoom in again, you should be able to see this is what you'll be clicking. Right click on the network icon, it can be Ethernet or it can be Wi Fi or wireless. Okay, I right click on it and then select open network and internet settings. So I'm going to click mine. So when I click on it, something like this. Just a minute. Oh, so I think that's okay. Something like this is going to open. When it opens on the left hand side, choose Ethernet. Choose Ethernet. Once you choose Ethernet, then on the right hand side, I need you to click Change Adapter Options. Okay. So when I click on it, it's going to bring this new tab here. People using Windows 11 might be a bit different, might be a bit different, but we'll be tackling that. Once you do that, the next thing you do is you need to check for Ethernet adapter. You'll have different Ethernets. You'll have another Ethernet, but you'll be having something like virtual something here. Do not go for that. Go for this is the Realtek uh, PCI GBE uh, family controller. You're going to right click on this one here. So I right click on it and I go to properties. When I go to properties, you can clearly see that we have both Internet Protocol version 4 and Internet Protocol version 6. If I want one for IPv4, I can either double click on this IPv4 or I just select it once and I click properties here or I just double click on it. So for our case, I look for and this is what's called dual stock, by the way, a device that can accommodate both IPv4 and IPv6. This is dual stock. The current computers are having this one. This is to help in the transition so that in future, they will now have PCs that can only, you will only see IP, Internet Protocol version 6 there. That's what you'll be seeing there. So I'm going to double click on IPv6 here, and this is going to come up. And this is what you saw on that my previous slide. So I put my 2001, the IPv6 address here. I put 64, don't put slash, just put 64 there, and you put the common default gateways, the link locker for IPv6. All right, good. So after that, you, of course, you will need to, you need to be changing. Move from, use the following IPv6 address and put it at, I mean, you remove it. This is the DHCP one. So always select this second one. Otherwise, you can see that these ones are inactive currently until you select the first one. And you'll do the same event for DNS up here. For DNS, very, very uh, important. So like I was saying, this is where you assign your IP6 addresses on your PC, on your PC for the GUA. How do you configure link local? Very important. This is an interface. The link local for this interface is F80, double colon one, colon one. Here is F80, double colon three, colon one. Here is F80, double colon two, colon one. And you can see how it's been configured here. Right here. And normally the GUA will always follow the link local. You configure IPv6, you say interface G000, then you say IPv6 address uh, 2001, whatever it is, slash 64 for GUA. Then you also say IPv6 address FE80 double colon one colon one. You must add link hyphen local when you're configuring the link local address. But both of them you start with IPv6 address. But for link local, you must add this word link hyphen local. Please do not forget. For the G001, you also say IP6 address, F8 double colon two colon one, link hyphen local, and the same is serial 0010, IP6 address, F8 double colon three colon one, link hyphen local. Please record this syntax checker 1244, 1244. You're going to configure both the link local and IP6. I, I think I just, no, I don't want to, I will give you this as an assignment. We'll, we'll work out the uh, what we are going to do at the end and also configure it, okay? Yeah, for this, uh, if Moses or Hilda is in the group, the second assignment is 1244. 1244, you're going to learn how to configure IPv6, both the link local and the global universe address and activate the interfaces and exit the interfaces. Very, very interesting one for you to practice. So please mark that. That is your second assignment for today, and there's a, a packet tracer for it. 
this packet tracer is 12.45. 12.45, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to configure IPv6 addresses on, on that particular device. It will look like this. The, the packet tracer will be looking like this. You can see that it will have uh, the two routers and you'll be configuring both IP version 5 and IP version 6. Very interesting. And the IP6 uh, table and the IP4 table is here. You'll configure both the two routers with IP4 and 6, I think, including the PCs as well. Make sure you here, yeah, make sure you score 100% right here. Very, very important on the completion. One more disclaimer. Uh, I have been trusting you with the ability to do the assignments. Do you know that when you do the assignments, I'm able to know when you don't do them. When you don't do the assignments, I've been very quiet on you submitting them to me. It's very deliberate because I want you to be in charge of your own learning. Okay? Yes, because when we come to do the labs, I will always know people who did my assignment and people who didn't. So just remember, the beneficiary is you here. You need to realize one thing, that there's a manner in which I lose nothing by you not doing my assignment. But there's a manner in which you gain everything by you doing my assignment. Because you just have a couple of months, like about two or three months, to be taking my assignments and doing them. After that, I will no longer be giving you assignments again because you will not be in KU anymore. So with a lot of humility, just know the assignment is your way towards knowing, okay? Do not, it, do not ignore them. Take them very seriously and know that when you don't do them, it's like you wash your clothes, put them in the cloth line. At night, you go and remove them. In the morning, you go and ask your neighbors, who stole my clothes? And you took your own clothes. So you'll be stealing from yourself if you don't do my assignment. So please be working on them. It is my only way to make you one, responsible for your learning, two, be in charge of your own learning, be in charge of your own learning. Otherwise, I think let's uh, let's proceed. Let's proceed here. So we have already seen how to configure the link local, we've seen how to configure then. I want to talk about something whose chapter will come. Just like in IPv4, where we are able to, uh, like the computers in this computer lab. The moment you power on that computer, you don't always assign it an IP. And by the way, no one comes in the morning to give them IP addresses. By just powering it on, it requests for an IP address automatically from main campus, where the DHCP server is. But when you put it off, that IP goes back to the DHCP server pool. And we'll be having a whole chapter for DHCP server configuration for IP version 4 and IP version 6. And that's what we call dynamic addressing or automatic IP assignment. IPv6 can also, devices can also get IP addresses automatically. The only thing is that in IPv4, there is only one way for them to acquire IP addresses, just through the DHCP server. In IPv6, there are three ways. And this is where my first story comes in. I want to tell you a story. I teach a lot using stories. I had told that to you. And you have many more stories to come that you'll be learning. So a story is told of three teenagers who are in high school. Three teenagers who are in high school. And these three teenagers, maybe they are in form two, form three, whatever that is. And the three teenagers, they, have, they come from different family backgrounds, different family backgrounds. And um, one of them, student one, comes from a very rich family. Student two comes from middle to do family. Student three comes from a very rich family background. Now, the story pro proceeds. It is time for closing, and the three students, they are learning from the same school, and they go home, okay? They close, they're going home for the holidays or for half term as it is coming next week. And so when they go for the holiday, the, the conversations they have with their parents is very different. The student from the rich family, this is, listen, listen to the conversation they're having with their family, their parents. So the student from the rich family is like, uh, mom, dad, this time around, me, I don't want to go to Mombasa for holiday. 
we want to go to Dubai, okay? Or 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 you take us to take us to where? Eh? That part. I don't even know how to call it. You know me, I was from student three, comes from the poor and the families. <laughs> this guy is mentioning a name I've never even heard. <laughs> and then I'll tell you the story of where I used to come from. The name of our school can even make you to fail exams. Anyway. So this student number one, then they close school and the first thing is holiday. They don't want to go local. No, they want to go international. They want to go to Cape Town to see the Table Mountains. They want to go to Dubai. Okay. They want to go to, to the US in California. They want, they're saying, we have been learning Cisco. I want to go to the Cisco headquarters in California, in San Jose. You know, in our school, we call it San Jose. Then they call it San Jose. Okay. And so, you know, the kind of conversations are very posh conversations. It's holiday, it's merrymaking. It's all manner of good things. It's the life that all of us ever want. So, you know what? They're not worried of, you know, where will school fees for next term come from, okay? Where will they even get pocket money? That is not their problem. Maybe the parents paid the whole year school fees. So it's not a worry for them. Let's go to the other extreme, the student from the poorest of families. So the student who come from a family where I used to come from, okay? Listen to the conversation. The very first day when they just reach home, they have not even put their bag down. The parents are like, ah, now you have come. They see you as a problem. <sighs> you come in and they, they already start thinking about the school for the school fees for us for next time. And they're like, you know, as your parents, we don't work. Okay. So now that you've come, please, can you start applying for jobs? Whether you look for people, you can go and dig their chambers or slash for them. Because they are putting you on their lap. They are reminding you. You need to start looking for fees for next time. You get that? Start looking for jobs. Start applying for jobs. When you see links, start talking to neighborhoods. You get jobs. You look for, start collecting money for your fees for next time. Start collecting money for your pocket money last, next time. Start collecting money for your shopping for next time. Even when you transport to go to school. You see, they... Problems for poor people and rich people are very different. This guy has no clue that there's something called a holiday. No, it's not anything in their vocabulary. So the parents totally, then they have to look for everything. They look for school fees, they look for pocket money, they look for transport, they look for shopping that they'll be using to go to school next time. Then let's go to the student from the middle to do family. Then the day they get home, you know, their parents, kind of have some jobs, but that job is not able to sustain everything for them. So on the day they reach home, the parents are with them. And the parents are like, you know what, Kijana, we are going to pay for your school fees. We are looking for it. We have not even found it yet. But for you, you have to start looking for money. Go and look for work. Look for money that will pay for your shopping for next time. Money that will pay for your transport to school. One if we will pay for your pocket money when you go to school, buy your shopping, buy your books, buy your pens. If you have torn uniforms, look for money to go and buy for new school uniforms. So priorities are different. The parents say it's 50-50. We look for fees, we look for the rest. That is a middle to do student. Students from the poor family, they look for everything. Students from the rich family, they don't even worry. The parents will take care of everything. It's not even in their minds. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a story of three ways in which IP6 obtains their IP addresses automatically. So the first one is called Slack. The second one is called Slack with stateless IP6. They are down here. I want you guys to see them. Right here. So the first one is called Slack. The second one is called Slack with the stateless sub. The last one is called stateful HTTP server. Between the, I want you to, I want you to help me to think here. Between the student from the rich, uh, middle to do and poor family, where can you place which one? You can just place anyone, wherever in those three. Someone. One of them looks obvious. Someone to guess. I just need I people guess, who can guess. I guess the rich of the stateful. 
step 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 full step, step full, eh? yes that is true <laughs> the rich one is step full i will explain uh -huh. the middle one is what the student from the middle to do for me isn't it yeah because this is them and this is their their parent here it's the parent who is doing everything here it's him alone here it is him and the parent here it is him he's alone stateless in fact, Slack means stateless address auto configuration. Okay. So in Slack, there's no DHCP server. The PC has to create its own IPv6 address without any DHCP server, without you, the network administrator, signing it to them. You create it from somewhere, and I'll, I'm going to show you how they create it. There's no DHCP server, but they obtain it automatically. How they do it is the, is the question. The second one is Slack. They still look for something by themselves. But the remaining things they get from a stateless DHCP server. That server is stateless. It's like a parent who is salaryless. They're doing many of jobs. The last one is a stateful. This is the parent. The parent from a rich, these are rich parents. Then they have a stateful server together. And I'll be telling you the difference between stateless server and a stateful server. A stateless server is like this. The parent, the stateless parent, parent from middle to do. They have a salary that is not assured. It doesn't come every month. And it's, it doesn't come. It's not consistent. Today they can get nil. Tomorrow they get 500. The other day they get, it's like they're doing your Kali. Okay. The stateful family can track the salary they earn every month. And that's why the stateless, stateful server is actually a server that wherever it assigns an IP address, it attracts how many are remaining, which one has been given out. In fact, it is the equivalent to the DHCP we have in IP version 4, the one that assigns IPs address, addresses, okay? And you can see in the last one, there's no slack. There's nothing that is actually obtained automatically. So that's my story about three ways that IPv6 obtains IPv6 addresses dynamically or automatically. We'll have a full discussion for this one. I want you to leave it at the story level. The next time we'll meet you is in season two. I will tell the same story and now now relate it more. For now, I want you to know that. Okay, know the three ways. I know the my story of the three students. Are we together? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's get it at that. Some of my students have told me they remember my stories and they don't remember what I thought. And I'm so happy to hear that. If you can remember the story only, <laughs> you don't remember the concept. At least if someone tells you, you'll always relate. You'll always relate. Anyway. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you when C is using Slack, which means a PC does not have a DHCP server at all. How does it obtain the IP address? Two ways. By the way, uh, there's something called uh, thanks, Jason. There's something called uh, RA, capital R, capital A. The RA and the RS messages, very important. Those messages are too important for the PCs. And what happens is that PC like this. You see that PC there? That PC for it to obtain IP address automatically. It just needs to be connected to a router whose interface has been configured with an IP address manually. So long as you send an IP address to that interface, that router can start sending RS messages. Actually, it sends RA messages because what the PC is looking for in order to create its own IP6, it is looking for an RA message because an RA is everything that is a gem but for the pc to get an RA message it first needs to look for it it needs to send what is called an rs message but the rs means router solicitation message the other day i was telling you the word to solicit if i have an orphanage and i want to look for funds i will say i want to solicit for funds isn't it to build an orphanage so the pc sends a router solicitation message to solicit for an RA message Router advertisement message. The RA is router advertisement. It's a bit complicated, Kidogo, or a bit. So it sends an RS message and it gets an RA message. 
Now the RM message only has the first half of the IPv6. How many, what is the total number of bits of IPv6? 128, isn't it? The RM message will only give it 64 bits. Then now it has to use the following two methods to re get the remaining 64 bits. And it can either obtain it randomly or automatically, or it can be generated using what is called the EUI 64 process. The EUI means Extended Unique Identifier. EU Extended Unique Identifier 64 process. And when something is obtained randomly, it's like automatically, there's no method and there's no criteria for obtaining something randomly. If I say I want to pick one person, I close my eyes and I want to see you. Is there a method or a formula for choosing something randomly? There's no method of choosing something randomly. So the second option they choose is randomly, and Windows 10, they do that a lot. Windows 10 chooses it randomly. I will tell you the disadvantage of using the EU64 process, which I want to explain here. Which I want to explain here. So let me explain for you the EU64 process. I'm going to get my notepad here. Because it will come to the exam, and you'll tell me I never taught you. I didn't teach you this one. That is not what I want you to say. So let me put it on uh, 64, on 36, that is. Now, the EUI 64 process, the PC uses its own MAC address. Remember MAC address? Exactly. It uses its own MAC address to create. You know, MAC address normally is, is 48 bits. So it uses this use MAC address by doing the EUI 64 process to obtain 64 bits. Let's see how that happens. So the first thing that will happen is this one. Let me get for you the MAC address of this PC. For example, I'll use the MAC address provided there. The MAC address there is FC, uh, colon 99, colon 47, colon 75, colon CE, colon E0. Normally, this is the MAC address of my PC. So we want to see how does the PC use the EY64 process using the MAC address to obtain 64 bits? Because up to here, you know, these ones are hexadecimal numbers. How many are they in total? Hey, what is two times? Two times how many? Times six? Twelve. We have a total of twelve hexadecimal numbers here. Okay. Remember, it's only uh, IPv6 addresses and MAC, ad and, and MAC addresses that use the hexadecimal numbers, only two addresses, okay? So the first thing that will happen is this. And by the way, what is 4 times 12? 48. A MAC address has 48 bits in total. If you convert all these, we'll get 48 bits. So what the device needs to do, or the PC will do, PC needs to get the seventh bit if you convert all of them to bits, which will be the seventh bit. You know that F here, if you have eight, four, two, one, okay? Guys, F is equal to what in binary? 15, isn't it? Which is one, 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 isn't it? This is F which is equivalent to 15, isn't it? Because if you add 8 plus 4 plus root 1, you get 15, isn't it? We are converting F and C into bits. The second one is actually C. C is equivalent to A is 10, B is 11, C is? Is that correct? C is 12. Hey, you people don't have confidence in Mibwa. <laughs> It says 12. How much it is not? Mm. If you say A is, it is. equivalent to 10, eh? Good. B is yes. 11, and C is 12, isn't it? B is 13, yes. E is 14, and F is 15, isn't it? Good. So, which numbers do you add here to give you 12? 8 and 4. Very good. So, you put 1 under 8 and put 1 under 4. Put 0 under 2 and put 0. And uh, 
under one. So when you write, uh, when you write F into binary, you actually get uh, one, one, one like this, and you write uh, C into binary, you actually get my recording. I'll send this in the group as well. So this is F, isn't it? And this is what? Yeah. C, isn't it? So what we are supposed to do, we have just written F and C. We were actually supposed to write 994775CE seven, seven, and E7, but there's no meaning because we just want the seventh bit. So the seventh bit, one, two, three, four, five, six. six. And this is going to be our seventh bit, isn't it? See that the seventh bit? Good. Yes. Now, the rule is flip the seventh bit. Bits are zeros and ones, isn't it? Huh? If a bit is yes. not a zero, it is a what? It's a one. If it's not a one, it's a what? Yes. So if you flip a zero, what do you get? You get a one. It's like head and tail. If you flip a coin, you can either get a zero or, I mean, you either get a, a tail or a head, isn't it? So the same thing, mm -hmm. we flip the seventh bit and we should now have one. So what I do here, I put it here, and now I flip this one into our, into one. Are we together after that? Now yes. instead of zero, we have our one here. Then we need to take it back where it was. Check this out. Is this still F, F, F here? That is F, isn't it? So mm -hmm. we put it here. It's still F, just like this equal to F. But check this, something has changed. We now have one, 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 zero. Let me put it here. This one is equivalent to what? We add eight plus four plus two. Where well, there's a one here. What is that? 14, isn't it? Are we together? And 14 is which yes. hexadecimal number? It's E. It's E, isn't it? That means now where they will C is now what? It's now E. Very good. So we take our MAC address here. E. Good. Put it here. And now where there's a C, we now have an, an E, isn't it? That is the first step. Flip the seventh bit. You always have a different number. In fact, sometimes I tell my students, instead of converting F and E, you can just convert, you can just convert the second hexadecimal number. Because you know the seventh bit will always be the third bit of the second number. So if this is if this is our C, then do you think we will the seventh bit will always fall here? Isn't it? The third bit of the second hexadecimal number. So I just convert there because the first one will always remain. If it was F, it will be F. If it was A, it will be A. But the one that will always be affected is the second hexadecimal number. And you have seen it has just changed here from C to what? To E, isn't it? E. That is the first rule. Um, flip the seventh bit. Second rule and the last rule. Insert a constant number in the middle. Where is the middle here? The middle is here, isn't it? Is that true? Yes, we have three parts and three parts the other side. Insert the following number. Insert FF and FE. That one is constant. That one does not change. FF, FE. And trust me, how many parts are we having now? Here. Yeah. There now? Eight. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Isn't it? And each part has how many hexadecimals? Two, isn't it? What is eight times two? Sixteen. Sixteen hexadecimal numbers. The ones I've highlighted actually sixteen. And yet each of them can give us four, four, four bits. What is sixteen times? What is sixteen times four? 64. You combine it with the 64 you got from the router and it forms 128. So PCs will either do the EUS 64 process by flipping the seventh bit and inserting FFE in the middle. And this is a very common question in the industrial exam. I saw it. It's so many times there. They ask you, this is the network address and the router is doing EUS 64 process. What is going to be the IP here? And the put for your choice. I'll give you the real examples then. 
So this is the EU exit law process. Please mark it, flip seven bit, insert FFFE in the middle. Here is the catch for it. Is it possible to know someone's MAC address if they do this EI secure process? Can I know the MAC address? But if I reverse the process? Yes. What do I do to reverse the process? I will know in the middle this FFFE. I remove it. And then I go to the middle mm -hmm. here. I revise the 7th bit. I flip the 7th bit back and I'll be having the MAC address. Yeah, sure. You get that? Yeah. This method is not very secure. And that's why it is not preferred. Because someone can be able to get back your MAC address. When they just remove the FFFE, which is always in the middle. They go and flip back to the 7th bit and they have your MAC address. And that's not a good one. Okay? Yes. And that's why we highly discourage, but we need to learn it because it is used sometimes. So, someone to mute, please. Let's do the last thing, and then we can do our assignments and get going. The last thing we do is the multicast address, which is in IPv4. And the multicast address normally uh, can be identified by FF. FF. I want you to remember two or three global unicast. FE8, link local. FC or FD, unique local. Okay? Then we have FS, which is multicast. That is how you identify the six addresses, and you'll meet them in the exam. Two or three global unicast, FE8, uh, link local. FC or FD, unique local, and multicast is FF. When you see FF, that is a multicast address. You only have two of them. It's either FF02 and FF double colon one and FF02 double colon two. On two. I want us to do the last thing, then we get out of here very fast. Here, uh, you know, subnetting is just one page, by the way, one slide. That's the beautiful thing with subnetting for IPv6. One slide, and we are good to go. And I'm going to use this one here. So, subnetting IPv6, very simple. The first thing we see is the three parts of IPv6 address. You can see we have the global unica, global routing prefix, which is like the network portion, isn't it? IPv6 has a total of how many bits again? 128, isn't it? So out of the 128, the first 64 bits is the network portion. Okay. The second, after the 48 bits, then we have 16 bits in the middle there, by the way. The first 48 bit is the first three hex sets. Hex set one, hex set two, hex set three. That is the network portion, which is called the global routing prefix. Then the next one hex set, which is the fourth hex set, which has 16 bits, that is what we call the subnetting ID or the subnet ID. That is where we do subnetting. Then the last four hex sets, because there are always eight hex sets, isn't it? So the first three, global routing prefix, the fourth hex set, is the subnet ID, then the last four X sets, or if you can say the remaining 48 bits, that is what's called the subnet ID, equivalent to the host portion. In IPv6, we don't create more hosts. Why? Because we have more than enough hosts. They are 340 and decillion, even before we do subnetting. 340 and decillion, 340 with 36 zeros. We don't need more hosts. How many people are in the planet? Just about 8 billion. Eh? And 8 billion is not even a drop in the ocean of the IP6 addresses we have. So here we sub subnet to get networks, which means in network we borrow or we reserve. We borrow. So, and we borrow from host portion, we add to network portion, isn't it? That's what you're going to do. We just want to borrow. And let's see how we borrow. Let's see how we borrow. So let's say, that uh, these are networks. These are networks here. Two zero on the right hand side. Two zero zero one colon zero db eight colon a card double colon zero 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 zero. You see the fourth hex set, eh? yes. That is the subnet ID, the red part, eh? And that's how we are doing. Going to do subnet. You're going to do some borrowing. You see the double colon at the end. Sixty four, sixty four, 
uh, those are 60, the slash 64 more zeros. That's the host portion. In fact, two raised to the power 64 is each network here can give us up to about 18 quintillion addresses. One network gives us 18 with 18 zeros addresses. One network. Do you know how many networks we can get here before subnetting? We have 65,536 networks. Each of them can give us 18 quintillion addresses. Which, if you multiply 18 quintillion times 65,536, your head will just blow. Forget about that much. The addresses are so many that someone says, if you go to all the beaches of the world and assign every sand grain in the, leave alone the beaches of Mombasa, the beaches of the world, each sand grain can be hypothetically be given an IPv6 address. There are so many. That's why we don't get host. Now, we have to take some of those networks and assign to some networks in the next diagram. And then we are going to subdivide the first one. You see that 0000, zero, zero, zero double colon 064, the first one? We are going to subnet it. So what do we do? We take here, we take the 2001 db8001, this one, we give to this LAN here. 002, we give to this LAN here. 003, we give to the one network between R1 and R2. 004, we give to this LAN here. 005, we give to the LAN here. Now we want to take 000 and we want to subnet it. Okay? And I want to show you how do we subnet. And this is the only slide where we do subnetting because the next slide is the end of this class. One slide to explain subnetting for IP6. Very interesting. Anyway, let's see what is done here. And follow me very, very keenly. Step one. We know that the global routing prefix has so many bits, 48 bits, isn't it? The interface ID has 64, isn't it? And yet it is the host portion, and it's where we are going to borrow from. Okay? Uh, check this out. When we borrow, one hexadecimal has so many bits? Four bits, isn't it? When we borrow, we borrow a whole hexadecimal number. We don't borrow like we're borrowing an IPv4, no. We borrow a whole hexadecimal number, which has four bits. Since interface ID has 64 bits, we're going to borrow four bits, which means we minus four bits from the 64. We remain with 60. Those four bits were borrowed. We know that the subnet ID was the fourth hexadecimal, which has 16 bits, isn't it? Are we together? The four we borrowed here, we're going to add it to the 16 here. We get how many bits here? 20. And so what we have just done, since the red part was initially the subnet ID, we have borrowed one hexadecimal number, which is the purple part here. We borrowed one hexadecimal number, and now we now we no longer have the, just the four hexadecimal number. We have a fifth one here, and each of them has four, four, four bits. So four times five will give us 20. And that's now our subnet ID is now having the purple part as an extension. And now the first network will have 2001, 0db8, Akkad 00, zero colon zero, zero, zero. The second network will be have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then A, B, C, D, E, and F. E and F. It's more complex than that. And the reason why, the first, because it's more complex than that, I want us to do an assignment, similar assignment, because I'm going to give you an assignment similar to this and you'll get stuck somewhere. So if you have not been keener in my class, this is the time you need to be keen from the beginning to the end. This network, if I can zoom it a bit, contains a couple of networks here. This branch A, which is the router, this part here, you can see, this part is an IP version 4 network, isn't it? Yeah. Then the branch B router, is an IPv6 network. Are we together? So we are going to con subnet the IPv4 network. We are told that the first network is using having 500 hosts, the second is having 250 hosts. For this other side, we're given this network here for this LAN here, and this second LAN is to, supposed to use the next available address. Anyway, let me take you to the question very fast so that we are good to go. So here, we're told here, 
But uh, as a network technician familiar with IP version 4 and 6 addressing implementation, you are now ready to take an existing network infrastructure and apply your knowledge and skills to finalize the configuration. In this activity, the network administrator has already configured some commands on the routers. Do not erase or modify those configurations. Your task is to complete the IPv4 and IPv6 addressing scheme, implement both of them, and verify connectivity. Requirements. Configure initial settings on branch A and branch B, including hostname, banner, both lines. When you say lines, is line console and line VTY, and the passwords. Use Cisco as the user exec mode password and class as the privilege password and keep all the plain text passwords. Those are the basic settings, all right? Then LAN A is using subnet 172.20.16.0.23. Assign the next available subnet to LAN A2 with a maximum of 250 hosts. This is LAN A1, which is actually this network. It's already using this network, 176.20.16.20.23. And the second network is LAN A2, LAN A2, which is this network here. From the router interface, which is the default gateway, come to the switch, the PC, then they're using 250 host. So we are told, uh -huh. so LAN B1 is using this address, 2001, colon DB8, colon FADE, colon 00FF, double colon slash 64. You see, this one is not having anything after the double colon. It is a network address. OK, here it is just having 00, zero FF double colon 64. Assign the next available subnet to LAN B2. This is where it gets interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. This is the catch. So the catch is here. In the assignment, assign the first IP addresses to LAN A1 and LAN A2. Those are for IPv4. Then also LAN B1 and LAN B2 for IPv6. For the IPv4 networks, assign the last IPv4 addresses to the PCs. <laughs> For IPv6 addresses, assign the 16th address. Wait a minute. The first usable in IPv6 is double colon, colon one. The second usable is colon two. The third usable is colon three, isn't it? The 10th usable is colon A. 11, colon B. 12, colon C. 13, colon D, 14, colon, E, and 15th is colon, F. We don't have G, and yet they want the 16th. And the 15th is F. So which one is there? 16. Anyway, that's why we have this assignment here. For the link local uh, network for IPv6, use FE8 double colon B as a link local. The DNS server here, you're also going to configure the DNS server address to the PCs for both IP version 4 and 6. Test connectivity between the PCs for IPv6. You, can also, you should also be able to access the web page at the central of PKA servers. You'll be able to test that on the PCs. The DNS server addresses, I think, are right here. You can see the DNS server is here, and it has both IP version 4 address and IPv6. You can figure it on both the PCs. And what I'm going to solve this, and then I'll give you yours which is almost closer to this. So without much ado, let's do the subnetting here very, 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 very fast so that you do not sweat when you go home. So I'm going to remove these ones. And uh, the first thing I need to do, allow me to reduce the font. This is now the last bit of this class now. So the address we were given for IPv4, uh, 172.20.16. So 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So 172.20.16.0 slash 60, no, slash 23. Okay. The first requirement, as in the diagram, is 500 hosts. The second requirement, is 250 cost okay and they are very clever they just told you the first network is already using the first network this one is already being used i send the next available network to that of 250. you have to start submitting fresh 
You need to know because you need to know. As you sign this one, where is the last usable address for network for 500? That is OK. So let's go. Because we are seeing 500 here, we need to increase 128, double this. 256, 256, double this. 12, isn't it? Very good. Now, let's start with the 15, uh, 500 host. 500 host means uh, how many bits are here? Where does 500 fall? On 512, isn't it? How many bits are they? Very good. Yeah, because nine. this is seven. Yeah, nine. Very good. You people are doing my assignments. I can know that. So we need nine bits here uh, to be reserved. So what do we do? Our subnet mask is slash 23, isn't it? So 23 is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are 16, isn't it? We need 23. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Or we could have put 24 and we just remove one, change one to zero. This one should be zero, isn't it? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is our slash 23. Cindy, good. What is the subnet mask for slash 23? 255? 255. 255? That's what? 254. Good, 254. You people are very good with my assignments. I can see it. This is zero. So 255, 255.0. That's the new, the old subnet mask. Now, let's do, uh, let me remove this one here. Put it here. Let's now do reserving. We need to reserve the nine bits, okay? So to reserve, I'm gonna copy this one here. Put it here. And so reserving nine bits is one, two, three, four. This one's already eight, isn't it? And we add this one is nine, isn't it? Which means the subnet mask will remain the same for the first network. What's the increment, guys? Two. Isn't it? So we just need to take our network here uh, and I put it down here. Let me just put this one here. Yeah, I put it down there. It is, the increment is two, and it's on which octet? Third octet, isn't it? Which means we're going to add it on 16, huh? OK? Yes. So let's do this very fast. So what is 16 plus 2? 18. Very good. And this is going to be 0. And uh, we need to put this. This number is beginning with 18. This one ended with? 17. Yeah? Very good. 17, isn't it? Uh, this one is beginning at zero. This one ended at? 255. 255, isn't it? We did talk about that last time. And this will be slash 23. And slash 23 is a subnet mask that is uh, 254.z.0. Yes. Good. So we have done the one for 500. We now go for the one for two, 250 host. Where do you find 250 cars here? 256. Uh, 256, isn't it? 256 is 2 to power? 8. eight. Very good. So that's going to be 2 to power 8. This is supposed to be 250 now. Or I could just leave it there so that it will guide people here. This was 9 bits. So I say here, should be equals to uh, eight bits. Is that correct? Good. So we need to reserve eight bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, isn't it? And we have to change this one to one, to one now. So what is our increment now? It's one. The last one bit, isn't it? The last bit of one is always the increment. And it is on which octet? Third octet. Very good. So it's, if it's on the third octet, let's do this one here. So we need to add, what is 18 plus 1? 19. And this is going to be 0. And we need to find the range here. The range here should now be, this is beginning at 19. This one ended at? 18. 18. Very good. This is 0. What is here? 255. Our new subnet mask is going to be? 255, 
255. Dot 255. Dot 255. Dot 255. Dot 0, isn't it? Dot 0, the lower one. Which is slash? 24. 24, very good. All right, so this is slash 24. And our subnet mass is now gonna, gonna ending with 2. Go to what? 255.0, isn't it? Good. And we have gotten our two networks. What is the first usable IP here? The first usable IP. 16 dot? One. Dot one, isn't it? Yes. We said 176.20.0 is a network address. Okay? 20. Dot 16 dot 1 first usable, 16 dot 2 second usable, 16 dot 3 third usable. What broadcast is 17 dot 255, isn't it? So what is the last usable? 17 dot 254. The one that yeah, the one that comes before 255. The one that comes before 255 is this dot 254 is the is the last usable address, isn't it? We said don't touch 16.0. And 17.255. That is network address and broadcast. They are non usable. Okay. The same thing is 18.0. What is the first usable? 18.1. What is the broadcast? 18.255, isn't it? What's the last usable? 18.254. Okay. Yes. If you're forgetting a bit, go back to that link. I already uploaded it. Go and look at it very well. Download this as well. So this is so they say the first usable addresses by the, the first usable address will be given to the router interfaces. Okay. But the last usable addresses are going to be given to the PCs. Okay. Yes. So I'll give you that chance. And remember, the first usable is also the default gateway for the PCs in that line. So if you look at this diagram now. Let me just uh, remove it here. So if I zoom in, what is actually here right now? So the first network, you'll actually give it to this this PC, this switch, and because the switch must also be configured, the IP addresses and the router interface. The second network for 250, and by the way, I don't know whether I told you here. Let's take that on our video. You want to snap it? That's okay. So this is uh, this is for 500 host, and this is for 250 host. That's for 250 host. You want to take a screenshot? Uh, you'll also find the link. I'll put the link there so that you can always follow this. Okay. So that is so that's where you're going to get your IPs now. The instructions are now on the on the guidelines there. Use the first usable IP to the PCs. Use the last usable IPs open. I mean the last usable to the PCs and the first to the router interface for all the all, all of them. Okay. These IPs, the, the one for IPv4, they are only meant for you saw the IPv4 network, eh? Only these two router interfaces are going because this is the one for IPv4 network. So you give the second network for 500 for 215 before these guys and for 500 for these guys. Are we together? Did I? Sir, yes. yes. Now for the use of that router in the in the last in the, in the IP IP person so mm. that router. Mm -hmm. Then the network address that you're going to configure there. You don't configure the network address. We said only IP addresses. Oh, the IP address. So. Yes. The network address is never configured to any device. Address. Okay. By the way, this interface, the IP is provided on the table. It's on the table, IP address table there. Okay. That one you don't configure. It is actually there. You can see the one for branch B is given IPv6. The one for IP version 4 is provided here on the table. You can see it's here for G002. Okay. So that one is provided. You only get the one for G00, G01, and also for IPv6. Let me now do IPv6 now. IPv6 is the most interesting one. I now want to hide all this one and make my whiteboard to be clean. And I want to bring IPv6 address. We are told we are given this address, and this is very simple. 
and the tool configure the next available address. So this is the address we are given. Did I tell you how to differentiate a network address and an IPv6 address? If there's no number between the double colon and the slash 64, that's a network address, okay? Where do we do subnetting in IPv6? And the subnet ID, which is always the fourth one. So trust me, our subnetting is going to only affect this part here. You see that fourth part? Because this is the global routing prefix, first extent, second extent, third extent. They are those ones we don't touch. In subnetting in IPv6, you, it will only affect the fourth extent, which is called the subnet ID. Okay? Now, it's very interesting and it's very straightforward. How to get the next available network? Very easy. And I'm going to I'm going to take you back to what you learned the other day. Just simple terms, what you are taught in primary school. Remember 19, the last one? Nine plus one? Yeah. It's 10. Do we write 10? We write zero, we carry one, isn't it? Because the last number in decimals is nine. If you reach nine, you, ca you cannot write 10. There's no 10. The next one after nine is Z, zero. That's why we'll write here. We write a zero there, we carry one, we add one to two. Sorry, we add one to one, we get? Because the next number after one is two. How do you get two? We add one, we increase the next number by one. So here, we'll actually get here two and we get 20. You cannot say the answer will be 110. No, that will be wrong. You add nine plus one, you get 10, you write 10, you bring down one. That's not how we do it. Which means, check this. What is the next number after seven? Seven. After seven, we get eight. eight. After eight, you get nine. What do you do to eight to get nine? You add one, isn't it? Very good. We are also adding one to nine to get the next number. And what is the next number? Zero. It's zero. We are adding. <laughs> it looks stupid, isn't it? If you add one plus seven to get eight, it means you added to, in, to get the next number after se after seven which is eight, you add one to seven to get eight. The same way, if you add one plus nine, you should get the next number. And the next number is, not, is zero. And if I add one, if I want to get the next number after zero, which is what? One. What do I do? I add one and I get the next number. Very good. So in decimal, the next last number is nine. Let's see in, um, when you're having an IPv4, and let's say we have 254 in every octet. We add one, we get? We get 255, isn't it? Then we add one. We cannot get 256, isn't it? Because every octet only ends at 255. So if I add one to this particular uh, 255, I say add one here, the next number I'll actually be getting will be a zero like this, sorry. I'll get uh, a zero, but there'll be, I'll put a decimal point here and behind it. Now I add one to the, I add one to the, to the next uh, step. So you're having now 1.0 because 255 is full. If I add one, I write zero, I carry one. I add one to the next octet. So the last number in, in decimals is nine. The last number in IPv4 octets is 255, isn't it? What is the last number in hexadecimal numbers? Eh? In hexadecimal numbers? So we start from zero. We go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you go to A, B, C, D, E, F. Do we have a G? We don't have a G. So from F, you go where again? You go one, because F is full, isn't it? Now check this out. We are given this part here is zero, zero, F, F. To get the next number, we just need to add one to this zero, zero, F, F. Are we together? So check this out. I want to get the next number here, and I want you to see how I get it. 
Now, I'm assuming this part is held to zero, zero. What is F plus one? Yeah. No. Which, which number comes after F? After F? Wait. Which number comes after nine? Zero. Is it, if you add one plus nine, <laughs> what did you get here? You got a zero, isn't it? And you carried one to the next of octet, isn't it? Because the last number, the next number after nine is zero. We added 255 plus one, we could not write 256. So we write zero here, we carry one, one here, isn't it? The same thing, since F is the last number, you have zero all the way to nine, A all the way to F. There's no G. So what is the next number after F? Zero. Because F is full, you go again back to Z, zero. So F plus one, who's going to get the next number? We get a zero here. And we carry what? Carry one. One plus F? One plus F? Zero again, isn't it? We get zero. We carry what? One. What is one plus zero? One plus zero, we get zero. <laughs> huh? I was still hunting. No, even then they didn't know the answer. It's not just you. I was still hunting in my mind. That's, that's <laughs> okay. Yeah. I want you to relate what I'm saying with reality. Okay? It's a very small logic that you need to get. I know, I know. So many people have answered me. So many people have always answered me. One plus zero is zero. So what is one plus zero? One. We get one. And that's how we get this as one. And so by increasing this part by one, we get F plus one, we write zero, carry one. F plus one, we write, we get zero, carry one. We add one plus zero, and you get a what? A one. And this is the next network. Sir. Yes. Let us try one sample. <laughs> by, by changing, by changing the, the, the yes. subnet ID. Yes. We just change the subnet ID. So we cannot touch it. It's, or the subnet ID. The subnet ID, we change it. It's what we have changed right now. No, well, like, like yeah, another number with different subnet ID apart from, okay. <laughs> apart from this one. Okay, that's okay. Okay. Uh, so give me, what can I change it to? Change to CCDD. Oh, CCDD. Yes. Very good. So uh, CCDD. DD, isn't it? I can put them maybe capital letters, but you can mix CCDD. If you want to get the next number here, it will be very easy. So what I do, I also paste this one here, but I make these ones to be, let's say they are all zeros. Eh? Uh, zero. So what is D plus one? The next number after D is what? E. e. So this one becomes E. There's no carrying on path. Because E is the next number after D. Isn't it? And the rest will be, these ones will just maintain them. We'll have a D here and we'll have CC. So the next number will be CCD, the next network. So it changes on the subnet. Just add one. Normally add one to the first hexadecimal number. If it is F, it makes your work easier. You write zero and add one to the next one. You get that? Yeah. Now, so let me go back to our question. I don't want, yeah. So can I remove this one? Yeah. So that it doesn't confuse people, okay? Yeah, sure. All right. So these are going to be your two networks. Where well, the first one is going to be, but before I do that, let me explain for you something. You can see there's no number between the double colon and slash 64, isn't it? Well, eh? yes. What is going to be the first usable IP in this network? We just need to put a one here. So the first usable IP here. So first usable. You're just going to put a one here. That is the first usable. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very rarely do they tell you to do that. They do less. They do less. Uh, you have to get five networks. You just add one. Add one until you get the next one, the fifth network. So long as you add one on the subnet ID on the fourth hex state. Okay. Yeah. Are we together? Did you get his question? Eh? 
Yes. So this is how you know the first usable. Second usable? Two. There, isn't it? Ninth usable? Nine. Tenth usable? A. That's going to be the tenth usable address. Eleventh? B. Twelfth? C. Fourteenth? E. Fifteenth? Fifteenth is F. T the 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 fifteenth is F, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now the problem comes when you want to get sixteen, and that's where the rubber meets the road, because the last number is F. There's no G, and just the same thing that I was saying. I have F. I need to get the next number. So to get the sixteen, check this out. <laughs> I want you to check this out very very keenly. So uh, let me just do this. Let me put one here. And I put here the 15th usable for the sake of your learning. And put that here and I put F there. This is, we agreed this is the 15th, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Now let me put the 16th usable address. So for the 16th usable address, we just need to add one after F, isn't it? Yeah. But listen to this first. What is F in binary? One, 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 one. Isn't it? Isn't it? Good. And yet, this one, 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 which is the fifth, uh, 15th address, okay? And yet we want to add one to this F. What is F plus one? Just like we did it down here. I don't know where we did it. F plus one is zero and carry one, isn't it? So if F plus one is zero carry one, this is what will happen. And check it very keenly because it's gonna be confusing at the end. It's the last thing we are doing and then we go home. It's already eight o'clock. So if F, we want to get the 16th bit here. And what is this double column by? They are zeros, isn't it? So check how many parts do we have? It? How many extents? First, second, third extent, and we have fourth extent. Okay, and you know that f is another extent, isn't it? So we have four plus the f, which represents another one. Uh, in fact, that f. Can you write the f in full, by the way? It's actually it actually has it has yes. So listen to this. Listen to this. Uh, since F is one, 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 and we have double colon, which represents zeros here. Okay. We want to get what is the 16 bit because the last octet is actually full. It's filled with, with one, 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 one. So to add one, To this one, since it is full, okay, we are going to add one and we get a zero here. And you cut one and we put it here. And they are very separated. Remember, initially, we are having one, one, one here, which we have added one here. It's like we are adding here. Let me just explain to you this. It's the most difficult sometimes to understand. In binary, there's no two. There's just ones and zeros. One and a one, we, cannot, we can never get two, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this is already full. If you added one to what is already full, we expect this one to be all zero. In fact, we don't actually use the adding process here. If you are adding one, it's like you're having 255 and you add one, you, I need to see you get a zero here. So we expect to add one there. We actually expect to get this zero here. We carry that one and we add that one to the next number, which is going to be, sorry, what did I do? Yes, which is going to be here which is going to be one zero. We have 
we had F, we had added one to F, we got a zero. And when you add, uh, when you added uh, one, we got a zero and carried one, put one to the next number. Now, how do we interpret this one? This zero has come from F, isn't it? And the F was one, 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 it was having four bits, isn't it? Which means this zero is actually representing four more zeros here, which is having one, two, uh, three, four like that. And the one here actually has one, two, three. So this is actually the first hexadecimal number, which was one, 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 was F. It was four. We added one and we got zero and we add one to the next hexadecimal number, which was initially to zero. But because we could not, we don't write zeros that come at the beginning of F, we had omitted them and we just wrote F. So what I'm saying is this, you will digest it pole pole. The next number after F is one zero, where F plus one is zero, carry one, add it to the next hexadecimal number, give you one. Remember, since like I've just said here, this is going to be one zero. That one zero is not 10 because there's no 10 in hexadecimal numbers. This one zero, one is another hexadecimal number, zero is another hexadecimal number. They have been shortened. If you read the one in full, it will be zero, 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 one. If you read the zero in full, it will be zero, 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 zero. So it will actually be like this. This will be zero, zero, zero. And the one, this the first zero here will be zero, zero, uh, zero like that, such that if you want to write this one, so we omit the leading, the, the leading zeros, and we get, what do you get? One. We get one, isn't it? Very good, you get a one. And if you omit the leading zeros here, you get a zero, isn't it? And that's how we end up with one zero. It is not 10. If it was the 10th one, you would have put A, isn't it? But it is one zero slash 64. That is the 16th usable address, and it's going to be asked. Assignment I'm going to give you. It's going to have that question. You're going to be told configure the 16th. So for both networks, we agreed the first network that you're given, you'll configure it as it is. If they need the first usable, put one after the double column. If they need the 16th usable, put one, one zero. For the second usable, for the second um, available address, which will be, which will be what? Here, it will be 2001, 0, 0, 1, 0, after I got the next available. For the first usable, put a one, and for the 16th usable, please put one, zero, there. That is the 16th usable. This is the 16th usable, and this one is there. First disable. IPv6 comes very gradually. It gets very confusing, especially at this point. Dealing with 16, dealing with 50, some of those things. Okay. So I want you to go and try it. Now, which is my assignment? My assignment is that which I had already sent it in your WhatsApp. You remember those assignments I sent the other day? Yes, go and look for assignment 8421. The packet tracers are sent in the group. 8421 is your assignment. I already sent it in the group in form of packet tracer. Someone was asking me, it is not opening. You can't open it on the phone, okay? You can only download it in a laptop that already has the latest version of packet tracer. When you download it, it will open. And then you can now work on it and go and configure and get done with it. Okay. If you need an illustration, that YouTube channel, if you go there, go and look for playlists, then look for Cine One. Go and look for chapter 12. You'll find it, an example of it done, all of it done there. Are we together? Yeah. I've given you a leakage with something similar to that. Not, not the real one, but something similar. I want you to go and figure it out. I beg this stop there for today. Uh,
that's your assignment. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll be working on the uh, we should be working on ICMP is very small, chapter 13. We could do maybe 13, 14, or something like that. Yeah. So that's all, guys who are attending online. Let me now uh, post the recording. I'm going to post it uh, in the group. I'll now stop the recording now. And um, when you go to that YouTube channel, okay? Don't just go there and leave. See, they say you give God what belongs to God and give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Go and subscribe and share one. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> subscribe and share to other people to watch, my friend. How do you support the work we're doing here? Yeah. Anyway, that was on a lighter note. Eh? I know you know what.